Well, good morning. It is Friday morning. Yay, weekend. Yay, weekend. It's almost Sunday. Praise God, we came through the week. And uh, good morning, my Sally. Uh, and now I can just go back to seeing Sally, my sister, not the storm, because now it's just Sally, my sister, my cousin, Teresa. It is her birthday today, so happy birthday, Teresa. Also, this is a public service announcement for Veronica Proctor. I know you had a birthday yesterday, but I don't know how to get in touch with you and find out what your address is because I have a treat for you. So, Veronica Proctor, please contact me. Please contact me, Veronica Proctor. I know you have my number, and uh, but I don't have yours, and so... Um, Veronica Proctor, please contact me. I have something for you. All right, so today is September the 18th, my cousin Teresa's birthday. I have uh, a couple of cousins, uh, Teresa, who, um, I have uh, my cousin Teresa uh, Walsh Johnson, who is on my mother's side, and um, then I have my cousin Teresa Carol Edison, who is on my daddy's side of the family, so... Um, and, and both of them I love so much. Both of them I love so much. And Teresa, uh, my cousin Teresa Johnson, who is in Spartanburg, no, no, just outside Spartanburg in South Carolina. Um, she is a retired nurse. She has been an RN and uh, just a, a great, great, great person. I love her so much. So, uh, good morning, good morning, good morning, Terry, good morning, Angela, Pamela, Sandra, Karen, who else? Oh, good morning, Beverly, good morning, Jerry, good morning, Gloria, and Barbara, and um, uh, uh, Robert, I think that's, uh, I think that's Rob and Annie, too, good morning, Kathy, good morning, Barbara, Barbara, good morning, Miss Terry, let's see, who else? Who else? Tomorrow morning, we will be taking communion. Our Bible study starts at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. But um, uh, tomorrow morning, uh, we will have communion and we will have Bible study. And it starts at 10 o'clock. So, next Wednesday is when we're having the drive-by birthday party for uh, Francis Krause. And that's at the church. <clears throat> but you can, if you're not going to be able to attend, you can send her... Uh, a gift or a, please send a card to Francis Krauss and that's 5700, 5760, 6700, <laughs> 6700 Bach, B-O-C-K Road, Fort Washington, Maryland, 20744. All right, here we go. So today we're going to look at Psalm 75. This is the last one of the Do Not Destroy Psalms. This one is not written by David. This one is written by Asaph. And if you remember, we <clears throat> we talked about Asaph. One second. We talked about Asaph being one of the praise leaders, one of the spiritual leaders there with David. He would have been one of the ones to lead in praise and worship. And we're, we're talking today about Psalm 75. And this is actually written by Asaph. But uh, Asaph and David were uh, great companions, great, I guess, partners in ministry. I don't, I don't know how to describe that. But uh, he starts out by saying, Father, we thank you for today. And Father, we thank you for this day. I thank you, God, that you've given us this day, that we may rejoice and be glad and be thankful to you. Father, I thank you for giving Teresa another year. Lord, I thank you for letting me have Teresa as part of my life. She's such a powerful influence in my life. And I thank you for her testimony. Lord, I pray today that you would open our ears and our eyes and our hearts to hear your word. In Christ's name, amen, amen. For those of you who know me pretty well, you know that uh, I would prefer year-round to wear white pants. Uh, when my mother was alive, she was a strong believer in after Labor Day, you don't wear white. So I just would like for all of you diehards to know that today I'm on black capris. And so, um, 
maybe I'll maybe I'll wear them. It's it's my theory that until it snows, you can wear your white pants and your white shorts. And we're in the house anyway, so who cares? Uh, okay, so here we go. Psalm seventy five. We give thanks. We just give thanks to you, God. We give thanks to you, our God. We give thanks to you. Uh, I give thanks to you. This is ACF saying, as a collective group, we're saying, we give thanks to you. We give thanks to you this morning, God. We give thanks to you this morning. We give thanks to you in every part of our life. And he says, we have, we're giving thanks to you. And then when he says, because your name is near, or that means your name is known. People know your name, and, and I'm grateful for that. I am thankful for that. I am glad that we can all acknowledge you and that everyone knows who you are, and we know your character, and we know what you've done, and we know what you're capable of doing. We've seen your mighty works. We've seen your mighty hand, and we're just giving thanks this morning. We're just giving thanks. And it says, men will tell of your wonderful deeds. Uh, we're going to be talking about it. We're going to be singing about it. But not just believers, but others will have to say, here's this thing that happened. And it, it could only be God, right? Right? I mean, how many times have people come to you and say, well, you're a Christian, right? Okay, yeah, you are. And um, I heard about this thing and and that would be God, right? God just did that, right? And and I love it when, you know, then I'm like, yes, of course. Of course, God just did that. God did that for you. God put that into play for you. I was able to do that just uh, earlier this week. I was able to say, somebody said to me, that's just God, right? And I was, I said back, absolutely. That's just God because nowhere else, no way else could that have happened. And then, it, and then Asaph says, you say, talking about God, you say, when I choose, when I choose the appointed time, when I choose. And that's God saying, I get to choose the appointed time. I get to choose what's going to happen. And it, I'm the one who gets to judge uprightly. I'm the one who chooses. You choose the time. God chooses the time and God chooses the judgment. And God's timing is always perfect. It's never too soon. It's never too late. I have a book uh, right now. I cannot think of who wrote it. Kevin, Kevin, somebody I dropped my thing. And it says, God's never failed me yet, but he sure scared me a couple of times. That's because we get this idea of a time frame in our minds. We get this idea of how it's supposed to happen in our minds. And we we forget to leave the equation in there of, oh, it's done in God's appointed time, in God's way. And then also, we're always thinking about judgment and, and how this is going to happen and how maybe this could happen. But God is saying, I get to choose the judgment. It's going to be fair but I'm the one who does the judging, not you. And it says, uh, I'm in Psalm 75, 3. When the earth and all its people quake, it is I who hold its pillars firm. So sometimes the whole we feel like the whole world is shaking. Hasn't it kind of felt like that this summer? Like the whole world is just shaking and everything is moving and, and moving around. And we feel like we need to hold on to something. But God is saying, I'm the one who holds the pillars firm. I'm the one who holds the foundation in place. I'm the one who holds you in place. I'm the one who makes sure that you are standing firm and what you are standing on is settled and it's firm and it's okay. Then it says to the arrogant, this is still God talking, to the arrogant, I say, you know what? Boast no more. And to the wicked, do not lift up your horns. Now, horns always means authority. Uh, authority is, is through the horns. It, it refers to strong animals who have horns. Think of the oxen and, and their horns. And he's saying, you know what? Uh, don't lift up your own horn. Don't, in other words, don't blow your own horn. I wonder if that's where that came from. 
Don't blow your own horn. Don't, don't praise your own name. Don't be so sure. Don't be so arrogant. It says, to the arrogant I say, hey, don't be doing that in your own power. Don't be doing that in your own strength. Do not lift your horns against heaven and do not speak with an outstretched neck. Listen to this. Spurgeon says, impudence or arrogance before God is madness. Isn't that powerful? Impudence before God is madness. The out sne outstretched neck of insolent pride is sure to provoke his acts. Think of the outstretched neck of a chicken just before it gets an axe. It says the outstretched neck of insolent pride is sure to provoke his axe. Those who carry their heads high, he's talking about proud and arrogant people, shall find that they will be lifted yet higher as Haman was upon the gallows which he had prepared for a righteous man. So God is saying to these who just want to stretch those necks out and they're proud and they're arrogant and they're boastful and they're depending on their own strength and their own stuff and they're coming against righteous people. And he's, he's saying, you better be careful with that. Don't do, God is saying, don't do that anymore because you better be careful stretching that neck out, buddy. Do not lift your horns against heaven and do not speak with outstretched necks. How many times have we seen people and they're talking and they're defying God and the more they talk, <coughs> the longer their necks get and they've got their shoulders back and they've got a spirit of arrogance and a spirit of pride on them and they're just speaking out and they're defying God and God is saying to them, do not do that against me. Don't you, step, don't you start that with me. Don't you spread that stuff about me. You be careful. You take a step back. You stop that boasting. No one from the east or the west or from the desert can exalt a man. That means promote a man. Nobody, nobody here on earth, no man here on earth can promote a man. Promotion can only come from God. And if you are looking for promotion from a man, if you're looking from promotion for promotion, from inside yourself, then this is saying, you know what? It's not going to work because that is self-promotion, self-exaltation. That's pride. That's arrogance. That is not relying on God. That is a two-year-old saying, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. And they cannot. So they continue. Or we've seen adults who say, I, I, don't, I just don't need God in my life because look how well-educated I am. Look how much money I have. Or look how smart I am. Or, or look, at, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. And then how many times have we seen look at me turn into as I fall? <clears throat> but it is God who judges. It is God who brings one down and he who exalts another. It is God who decides that person is not worthy. That person is not fit. That person is wicked. I am not going to promote him. I know about things that are going on in his life behind the scenes. So I'm not going to promote him. I'm not going to make sure I'm going to make sure that he is kept well below the radar. But then about others, he says, you know what? I'm going to lift them up. I'm going to exalt them. I'm going to promote them. I'm going to give them some success. It is God who judges. Now listen to this imagery. I've been thinking about this all morning. In the hand of the Lord is a cup full of foaming wine mixed with spices. Now, Steve and I do not have wine in our house. We never have. But I do have 
this grape juice that I buy over at Miller Farms. And guys, it's made from muscadine grapes and it is just the best grape juice. And so I have it in this clear cup so that you all can see what I'm talking about. And so it's, it's absolutely delicious. Next time we get to see each other, I'll make sure I have plenty of this in the refrigerator. I get it at Miller Farms, it's awesome. And so uh, here's this, here's this wine in a cup. But wine isn't supposed to be foamy. I, I had to look all this stuff up. I don't, I don't know anything about wine. But wine isn't supposed to be foamy. And this says it's mixed, it's well mixed hot with spices. So here's what, um, what can I put that on? Here's what I'm going to uh, think ahead, Janice. Oh, here we go. My box from Carolyn. All right, so here's my here's my cup of wine. Here's my cup, Lord. All right, so here's my cup of wine. And in my cup of wine, I am going to put, I'm going to put some uh, pickle juice. I'm going to put some hot mambo sauce. This, you can only buy this here locally. Hot mambo sauce. I'm gonna put some cayenne pepper. I'm gonna put some chili powder. Oh, get that in. And I'm gonna put some rubbed sage. Then I'm gonna stir that up. And just because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that there's gonna be somebody who watches this who would say, mm, I would drink that, I would drink that. So then I was like thinking and thinking, thinking, what would make wine foam? What would make wine foam and what would put this, <coughs> What would make the ceiling uh, touch on this so that nobody watching would say, yeah, that wouldn't be so bad. I would drink that. So I have my Sprayway, which is the world's best cleaning, foaming action. And all right. So do not try this at home. Gross. Gross. All right, now we have a cup of foaming, <coughs> foaming wine, and God would have that. In, uh, yeah, God would have that in His hand, and He would say to these wicked, evil, proud, arrogant people who uh, don't have the sense God gave them because they're out there acting like they're God and He's not. And so God would have this in His hand, and He said, and He would pour it out. And all the wicked of the earth would drink it down to its very dredges. You see, when you are so willing, when you are so willing to drink from sin, then you have to be prepared to drink the punishment. When you are so willing to drink anything anybody puts in your hand, and I'm not talking about beverages right now, I'm talking about sin. When you are ready to accept, life into your body, everything that everybody hands you, and then you're saying, you know what, I can do this because nothing's going to come against me, I'm okay, uh, I am so smart, I am so whatever that I, I, can, I can handle this, and I do not believe there's even a God, so I'm not even worried about the punishment, and in the meantime, God is just mixing up this nasty cup, it says, in the hand of the Lord is a cup full of foaming wine. That foaming means intensified wrath, intensified wrath, mixed with hot spices. And in some versions, it says mixed well, mixed well with spices. So it's not just a sprinkling. I mean, it's all through that. That, that punishment is gonna be permeating because God is so angry at these people who are so proud, who are so arrogant, who are gonna raise their heads up, who are gonna taunt and defy God 
and he says, it, and they're going to have to drink it down to its very, <clears throat> very dredges. To its very dredges. And it says, but as for me, but as for me, I will declare this forever. I will sing praise to the God of Jacob. I will sing praise to the God of Jacob. I will cut off the horns of all the wicked. In other words, I'm going to <clears throat> I'm going to praise God because God is going to just cut those horns right off. He's just going to take those horns. In other words, he's going to remove their power. He's going to remove their strength. And then what does he say? But the horns of the righteous, the horns of the righteous will be lifted up. We don't have to drink from the mess. We don't have to incur his wrath because we are living proof. We are living proof that God sets a table before us in the presence of our enemies. Oh, taste and see that it is good. Oh, taste and see that it is good. He prepares a table for the wicked. But he also prepares a table for the righteous. He prepares a table for the righteous. He prepares things that are good for us, things that are sweet to us, things that do not kill us, things that cause us to have more joy in our life, more uh, success in our life. He causes us to have things in our life that he's looking at the others and he's saying, I'm going to just cut you down at this, you know, right at the very where you are at the root. But he's saying to the righteous, I've prepared that for them, but look what I've prepared for you. Look what I've prepared for you. I'm going to give you, it says, but the righteous will be lifted up. up. That means our strength will be lifted up. Our strength will be lifted up because we have that same, we have the horns also, and that means our strength will be lifted up. Tonight at sundown is the first of Rosh Hashanah. And I've been reading about that today and looking that up. And um, one of the things that they do is that they prepare uh, ahead of time, but they prepare certain sweet foods. And uh, they have this challa bread dipped in honey to represent the sweetness. And uh, it is a time... This it goes into the time of Yom Kippur, and it is a time of redemption. It is it is a time where they do have particular foods and particular treats that they take and that they eat. And but it is also a time of real, real reflection, real reflection. And maybe you're not Jewish. I'm not Jewish, but it is a time. It is a time of reflection. Sally said, what a huge waste of that delicious juice. And I see that a lot of you are jumping right in that. I thought about that. I thought about that. Even as I was pouring it into my cup, I was thinking, what a terrible waste of that delicious juice. It's so delicious. I have three bottles of it. As we reflect, as we are thinking about God's redemption in our life, as we use this as a time of, uh, and I, I think absolutely Christians should join in this during uh, doing a time of reflection and redemption. Because as we take, as we take what God has given us, we reflect on our vows back to him. Asaph is saying, you know what? I'm going to sing praise. I'm going to declare forever. I'm going to cut the horns off the wicked. Now that's God talking, but he's saying, "I'm God is just going to take the power and the strength out of my enemy. You know, if a, if a bee stings you, but uh, 
it doesn't ha have its stinger anymore. So in, I guess in other words, it kind of just runs into you, but it doesn't sting you and it doesn't have any, um, you know, of its uh, poison. I don't think, a, I don't think a bee does that, but a lot of people are allergic to bees, so we'll stay with that. Well, that's because God has removed its authority, its power over you. And when God removes the power and the authority out of our enemies, and, and then, you know, their, their punishment is still falling. Their punishment is coming. Their punishment is coming. And they're going to have to, uh, they're going to have to drink the dregs of their punishment. <clears throat> but when God blesses us, and when we are in his hand, and when the Lord hands us the cup, we can drink and we can drink and we can drink and we know that we are protected and we know that we are safe just like I would never hand one of my children something that I knew it was bad for them maybe something they were allergic to or something that was bad for them I would never do that instead okay my daughter-in-law Lisa's birthday is coming up right away and I've just been thinking of what her favorite perfect meal would be. I, I just, and if I think about these things for my children, how much more, how much more does our God provide for us? How much more does our God provide for us? You know I'm going to drink this juice. It's so, I cannot overemphasize how delicious this juice is. It's just, it's delicious. And it's for me. What God has for me is for me. What God has for me, it is for me. That's why when God offers me something, I'm not like that little shy person who says, no, please, please, you know, I'm not worthy. I'm like, oh, Oh, yes, please, God. Please, God. Like David said about the sword of Goliath, let me have it. Let me have it. Um, let me see. Hold on. Carolyn says it looks delicious. I'm going to Miller's Farm. Okay, you go in to Miller's Farm over on the left-hand side where all the jams and jellies are, which is my favorite aisle at Miller's Farm. And it's uh, there's three different kinds. There's a muscadine. There's a concord. I think this is the concord. I said muscadine earlier, but um, I think this is concord. And then there's a white grape juice. So I have one of all three. I keep them in my refrigerator. <clears throat> They're delicious. They're delicious. You're going to enjoy it, Carolyn. Um, what did Frida Kramer say? I don't know. Sally's agreeing with it. Oh, show the bottle. Show the bottle. All right, everybody sit there. Give me one second. I'll be right back. Concord, this is the Concord grape juice. 100% grape juice, naturally sweet, no sugar added. Um, it's from Arkansas. <laughs> I thought I was buying local. It's from Arkansas. Uh, so, um, it's delicious. It's from the Post Family Vineyards in Arkansas. That's so funny. I've been buying this for probably six months maybe more. I thought I was buying local. Oh, well, I am, I am buying it from a local family. So give me that one. Guys, I love you so, so, so much. Let me see. Did I say everything I needed to? Yes. I will see you tomorrow morning with some of this delicious juice. Um, tomorrow morning we will do communion and, uh, I'm going to take this and 
pour it down the sink so that even the animals out in my yard can't get a hold of it. I love you so much. God bless you. Veronica Proctor, when you see this, please call me. I need to know your address. I have a treat for you. Father, I thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the good, sweet things that you have for us. I thank you for your power. I thank you for your authority. Our Lord, I thank you that you are tearing down strongholds in our life and that you are giving us the boldness and the ability to go forward in the strength that you are giving us. In Christ's name, amen, 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 amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.